Virtual switches can be extremely useful. If you're not using them as part of your smart home setup, you really should be. In today's episode, I'll tell you everything you need to know about using SmartThings virtual switches to control actions in third-party apps. I'll cover where to get them, how to get them set up, and how you might use them to enhance your automations. As we get started, I wanted to point out that I need to make multiple references to the Alexa app while presenting today's content. To avoid prompting your Echo devices, I will use the phrase Miss A as a substitutionary reference. Also, the information that I'm presenting today applies to the use of third-party apps like Sharp Tools and connected voice assistants such as Google Home or Amazon Echo devices. To profit from this information, you must have one or more of these apps connected, and you must also have given them permissions to access your SmartThings account and various devices. If you'd like to learn how to connect voice assistants, such as Google or Amazon Echo, I have a video that explains how to accomplish this in SmartThings. You'll find the link to this video in the description below. Let's begin with a simple understanding of virtual switches. A virtual switch is merely a device that you create within the SmartThings app. Because these devices are created and are not actual physical devices, we refer to them as virtual. There are only two actions that these virtual devices can perform. They can only be turned on or they can be turned off. So think of virtual switches as a light switch. They have one of two states either on or off. So now that you have a general idea of what a virtual switch is, let us consider some practical uses for these switches. Let's assume you want your Echo devices to make an announcement anytime a closet door opens. Let's assume that you have a Z-Wave contact sensor on your closet door. In my case, I'm using the Ring Alarm door contact sensor. Although Z-Wave sensors are compatible within SmartThings, Z-Wave devices are not recognized within the Miss A app. Therefore, if you wish to use this Z-Wave device to trigger a Miss A routine and you search the device list within your Miss A app, you'll discover that Z-Wave devices are absent in that list. This is where virtual devices prove useful. A virtual device can be substituted for the physical device and can emulate or mirror the actions of the physical door contact sensor and be used within a third-party app to trigger various smart home automations. To summarize, if a SmartThings device doesn't appear in a third-party app like Sharp Tools, Amazon Alexa, or Google Home, we can create a virtual device to emulate device changes and then use that virtual device within these other apps to trigger automations. In order to mirror or replicate a physical device status change on the virtual switch, we need to assign the actions of the physical device to the virtual device within a SmartThings routine. For example, when my Ring Alarm Z-Wave door contact sensor opens, then turn on the virtual door contact device. I will show you how to set this up in a SmartThings routine in just a moment, after which I'll show you how to use the virtual device within a Miss A app to make an announcement on all of my Echo devices. To be able to create a virtual device, we must install an app that is needed to create them. We will be using the Virtual Device Creator app that was developed by SmartThings community developer, Todd Austin. Assuming that you do not have Todd Austin's vEdge Creator app installed, you'll find a link to T. Austin's shared projects in the description below this video. You can also find this information on my website. My Buds Smart Home article contains detailed step-by-step -step instructions as well as all the links that I'll mention. So back to installing the vEdge driver. When you click on the link provided, you'll be directed to sign into your SmartThings account using the same username and password that you use when you sign into your SmartThings app. Once you have signed in, you will see Todd Austin's Shared Projects page. To access the vEdge Creator app, you must enroll your hub and then tap on Available Drivers. You will then be shown a page listing all the available drivers. Scroll down this list to find the driver titled Virtual Devices V2, then tap the button that says Install. This action will download the Creator app to your designated hub. Once the driver is installed, you can close your browser and go back into the SmartThings app. Within the SmartThings app, tap on the plus sign to add a new device, tap on Add Device, 
and then tap on the button at the very bottom of your screen that reads Scan for Nearby Devices. The latest version of the VH Creator app will be discovered and just tap Done to install it. The VH Creator app will be installed in a room titled Unassigned unless you've named it something different. If you've already installed Todd's VH Creator app, but you discover that it's not the most recent version, I'll show you an easy way to update the app. Go to your SmartThings app and long press the VH Creator tile and then tap on Remove in the pop-up menu, then confirm removal. Now don't worry, this action will not delete any of your current virtual devices. Everything will be okay, I promise. Once the Creator app is removed, then tap on the plus sign, tap Add Device, and then tap Scan Nearby Devices. The latest version of the VEdge Creator app will then be discovered, and all you need to do is tap on Done to install the app. With the Creator app installed, you're now ready to create your first virtual device. Go to the Devices tab in the SmartThings app and find the tile called VEdge Creator version 2.94. Tap on the VEdge Creator tile and then tap on the Settings cog next to Select and Create Virtual Devices and you will see a pop-up list containing about a gazillion types of different virtual switches. Don't be overwhelmed, there's just three basic types of virtual switches that I normally use. The device which you need to communicate with third-party apps is the one titled Alexa Switch. To create the Alexa Switch, just tap on it and it'll be created. The Alexa Switch has been working reliably within the Miss A app as the making of this video. There have been times in the past when it's been working sporadically. Amazon has had a history of making changes to their app, which sometimes breaks integrations with SmartThings but I have experienced consistent and reliable automations with the Amazon app at the present time. Now, when you create your Alexa switch, it'll be given a generic name. To change that name, long press the virtual switch tile and select edit from the pop-up screen. In the screen that follows, you will give the device a relatable name and assign it to the appropriate room. I'm using this virtual switch to mirror the actions of my closet door contact sensor in our family room. My ring alarm door contact sensor is identified in my SmartThings app as FR closet door, meaning family room closet door. I will therefore label our virtual sensor the V-Edge closet door sensor. I'm also going to long press the device a second time so that I can move the device to the family room where the physical contact sensor is located. This is so we can view the physical and the virtual switches together when testing their actions. Note that I left the VEdge prefix at the beginning of the virtual device label. I highly recommend that you do this for all created virtual devices. Doing this accomplishes two purposes. First, it gives you the ability to distinguish your virtual devices from all of your physical devices. Second, it makes it easier to find your virtual switches when creating routines. You will discover this to be true later when I begin to write the routine in the SA app. There are two additional setting changes that must be made for all created virtual devices to make them fully functional between SmartThings and your third-party apps. To make these additional setting changes, tap on your device tile and then tap on the three dots in the upper right. Now tap on the word Settings in the drop-down list. In the screen that follows, toggle on the Auto Revert and the Separate Contact options. The Separate Contact option creates a second virtual contact switch that will be used within the Miss A app to trigger routine actions. The Auto Revert option turns both virtual switches off following activation so that they are readied for the next event. Think of Auto Revert as an automatic reset switch. The Auto Revert option is needed in most cases, but there are some use cases where you might want the virtual devices to remain on until a later time when they are turned off by another smart home event or device. To finalize setup for your second virtual switch, you must rename it to match the label of the first virtual switch. Don't worry that the two created switches share the same name. You will be able to easily distinguish the two devices. The first created device has an off-on icon and the second device will appear as a contact sensor. It will also have the label of hyphen contact at the end of the device label name. Be careful to note that the first virtual device 
which is the on-off switch, is to be used within your SmartThings routine. The second device, which is the contact sensor, is to be used within the Miss A app routine. It's important that you make that distinction for these devices to work properly. Now that we have our two virtual devices created, we'll test them to ensure that they are working properly. To test the two virtual devices, I will tap on the first on-off virtual switch. This will cause the virtual switch to turn on and the virtual contact switch to open. Following these actions, both switches should auto-revert to the off and close positions. With testing done, we're now ready to use these created devices in the SmartThings and the Miss A routines. We will begin with the SmartThings routine. In the SmartThings routine, we must assign the status change of the physical device, our ring door contact sensor, to our virtual device, the V-Edge door contact sensor. This is where we will mirror the status of the physical contact sensor to the virtual switch. Let's begin in the SmartThings app by tapping on the first switch that we made, the virtual on-off switch. Tap on the word routines at the bottom center of your screen. Tap on the plus icon at the top of your screen. The SmartThings app has placed your virtual device in both the if and the then sections of your draft routine. We'll need it only under the then section. So we'll remove it from the if section by tapping the red minus sign. Now tap the green plus sign under if to add the trigger device. Next, tap on device status. In my example, I will find and select the device named FR Closet Door. The device that I'm selecting is the ring alarm contact sensor that is normally installed on my family room closet door. Next, we will select the type of sensor we wish to use in this routine. We'll want to use this device as a contact sensor so we can ascertain the state of the door, whether it's open or closed. Next, we will select open and then we'll tap on done twice. Now, looking at our if condition, it states if the contact sensor is open. This signifies that we want to use the open state of the closet door sensor to trigger the action to follow. We'll now need to add the action under the then section. Our action will be to turn on the V-Edge closet door sensor to the on state anytime the contact door sensor is open. Tap on the phrase, choose what you want the device to do, then select turn on, finally tap done twice and then save your routine. Now with our SmartThings routine in place, we need to test it. I have removed the ring alarm contact sensor from our family room closet door for testing purposes. If my routine is written properly, the virtual switch will turn on and the virtual contact sensor will open to reflect the opening action of our physical sensor. You should also see the FR closet light, which is a singlet Zigbee bulb, turn on whenever the family room closet door is opened. The family room closet door light should also be turned off when the contact sensor is closed. Now let's test the routine by opening the physical contact sensor. When I open the physical contact sensor, both virtual devices will respond. The closet light will remain on and active until I close the physical contact sensor. To finalize the automation with these virtual switches, we must create a routine in the Miss A app using the status of the V-Edge closet door sensor. The virtual switch will be used as a trigger within the Miss A routine to make a custom announcement on all of my Echo devices. To create the Miss A routine, open your Miss A app and tap on the word more in the lower right. Select routines, tap on the plus sign in the upper right. Under when, tap on add event, tap on smart home to search the list for your virtual switch, V-Edge closet door sensor. Note that all of my virtual switches with the V-Edge prefix are grouped together alphabetically at the bottom of the device list. Select the V-Edge closet door sensor that displays the word contact on the end of the device label. Now tap open to instruct the routine to perform the action when the V-Edge contact sensor is open. Tap next to add the action. In this section titled Alexa Will, Tap on Add an Action, tap on Announcement, and enter the phrase that you want your Echo devices to say. Tap Next, and choose the devices on which you want the announcement to be broadcast. Tap Next, then tap Next again to confirm. Finally, tap Save. 
To test these routines, I will open the physical family room door contact sensor, and if all goes well, you should hear an announcement on my Studio Echo device. The family room closet door is now open. Virtual switches can be used in a miss routine as an action rather than a trigger. These actions can be prompted by an echo voice command and the virtual switch can then be used in a SmartThings routine to trigger a scene that controls multiple SmartThings devices. As a use case example, I have virtual switches that control the security modes within SmartThings. The three modes are arm home, arm away, and disarm. I can use my voice to trigger a Miss A routine so that when I tell my Echo device to arm my home, the routines will change my arm away virtual switch from off to on. This action will cause my SmartThings home monitor to change the security mode to arm away. This change will be mirrored on my ring alarm keypad. Let's watch as I instruct my Echo device to arm my home using the wake word computer. Computer, arm my home. Now you will see that the SmartThings Home Monitor will change to Armed Away and also you should see on the keypad that it is now reflecting that the home is armed. I can disarm it by either entering a code and I can also disarm it simply by pressing the disarm tile on my SmartThings app. I hope this episode has enlightened you on the topic of virtual switches. If you found it helpful, a thumbs up would really make my day and provide support for my channel. Until my next smart home adventure, stay smart and stay connected.